Boys Lines. As Boys Lines. As bold as lions. As bold as lions. As bold as lions. You're listening to the As Bold As Lions podcast. Hello and welcome to the As Bold As Lions podcast. My name is Derek and uh, good to have you join me today. Uh, Just getting through, uh, I guess as I record this, we're we're stepping into April, but uh, getting through the month of March, um, just kind of the end of, of one month, the start of the, the next. Um, usually try to record things a little bit further out than the, just the week of. I've, I've learned my lesson with that, that I can't necessarily keep up if I'm uh, on that pace. So I'm always trying to work ahead and uh, think ahead of, of what to uh, kind of cover next. So um, just want to just to let you know, I appreciate you wherever you are uh, listening to this right now. Appreciate you taking the time to to tune in. And I'm not sure how you found me, if this is a, a brand new episode for you that you've never heard before and you've never uh, come across this podcast, this uh, channel before. Um, perhaps recommended from some other podcast or some other thing that you've been listening to, maybe a web search, who knows, maybe somebody sent it to you as a, a recommendation. Um, however you found me, um, just appreciate you. And, and if you're somebody that comes back on a fairly regular basis, maybe from week to week, I appreciate you as well. You guys are the kind of the bedrock of, of this thing and you help keep it going. So, um, just, just bless that you're, you're tuning in, taking the time out of your day to, to listen. Um, I'm going into just kind of, uh, I guess I kind of call these one-off type episodes, but it's kind of this gathering series that's been, been growing over time. And, um, if you remember last year, I did a bunch of, uh, podcast episodes, um, on various hymns, on the the kind of the context of the hymn itself, the 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 origins, the who wrote it, things like that, and then just pulling out some truths that that I I feel are are just embedded into these lyrics and these songs, and I I personally love doing that. It's probably one of those things I'll probably kind of come back to from time to time the the ones I did there were five back uh, summer maybe August time frame last year I can't quite remember at the moment I know there was another one at Christmas because we did a kind of a Christmas edition um, uh, angels we have heard on high I believe it was um, my memories it just it's not always what I want, as sharp as I want it to be right now. Um, but I know this one right now is called Jesus Paid It All, and that's the hymn that we're, um, we're talking about. And these are in, con- in conjunction with songs that I have released as well. Um, so it, it kind of kills two birds with one stone sort of thing. Let, lets me talk about something that I enjoy and also, um, kind of subtly push you to say, Hey, check this out. I, I did this song and, um, and I, I wanted to, to share it with you. So, um, I, I've talked about things like this on my blog before, but more recently with the podcast, um, I am tying this one into my blog for the blog of the month for April. So kind of double dipping there. You'll see that on both sites, podcast and the blog, DerekCharlesJohnson.com. Um, but this song in particular, just wanted to get it out kind of right ahead of Passion, Holy Week, um, Good Friday, Easter, Resurrection Sunday, um, all of that coming up because it's, it's really just... Um, a season of, of definitely thinking about these things, thinking about the cross, thinking about the resurrection. Um, some of these songs, we, we sing them throughout the year, but perhaps they, they seem especially poignant during this time to sing a song like Jesus paid it all or, um, the wonderful cross or, 
um, the old rugged cross. That's another one that we, we did last year. So the, um, the, the, the goal in, in doing this again, just to, to kind of dive into that, uh, a little bit of a break from our, our other content and, uh, hopefully something that you enjoy. If you're not a him lover, even, even if that's not up your alley, there's, there's still something that, uh, that maybe you'll take away from this. Um, if you stick with me and, and you find interesting. So, um, as I said, this, um, uh, this month of March, I've released this hymn, um, March 30th, Jesus paid it all just a streaming version. So it's on Spotify, Apple music. Um, I'm going to try to put the, the link in the show notes. If, uh, you're on a site where you can click to that. Um, otherwise you can just search Jesus paid it all. Derek Charles Johnson should be able to find it. This, uh, hymn, it, it may in fact, be my most favorite hymn uh, in the, in the bunch. If you of of things that I've heard, uh, and I know I've heard a lot of hymns I haven't heard yet that that maybe I would love even more. But there's just such a catalog out there, and I'm, I'm discovering more and more as I go. But this one's it's definitely in this top three category, top three, top five for sure, and. Um, I, I've just I've kind of fallen in love with it over the years. It's it's so powerful. It's hard to choose your very your favorite hymn. It's like choosing your favorite child. Like you you really shouldn't do that. So, um, but but they're all your favorite, right? So, um, this this hymn though, I I hadn't heard it. I grew up, um, well, I won't go a ton of my background, but I, I grew up probably college or post-college and, and heard this for the first time. Uh, there was a, an, there's an artist named Christian Stanfill, um, really a prominent worship leader. He's with the, uh, the passion, um, uh, passion, you know, the, Chris Tomlin, he came out of that David Crowder, all these guys. Passion was just starting when I was in college, but it was before, um, Christian Stanfill and some others came on and kind of took it over. Um, they still have their conference every year, I think around, um, New Year's Eve. And anyway, he did a, a reworking of this song in 2006. Um, seems like more modern arrangements have kind of followed since then. He kind of broke the ground on, on bringing Jesus paid it all back into maybe some of our, um, our regular worship services. And, um, uh, you know, my own background, I said it wasn't going to go too far in this, but I just to say, I think my 80s and 90s, especially in church, um, didn't didn't necessarily hear a lot of hymns. There was a lot of kind of this modern worship starting, kind of this movement that was coming, um, a lot of choruses and just kind of um, powerful music, not, not saying anything against it. Um, but there's been times I've noticed in music and, and specifically for the church, church hymns, um, songs that we, we sing that we've, we've strayed at times from some of these older th- choruses and, uh, and songs. We've even taken hymn, hymnals out, hymn books. Um, but there's been times where we've kind of followed the path back to them. And then maybe we've like Chris Tomlin, we've penned a a separate chorus to go along with, you know, amazing grace, my chains are gone or something like that, where we've, we've kind of brought it back in and then, um, flowered it up a little bit. And so, you know, I've got my own opinions about some of that whole thing. Uh, even where worship music is currently at, I could go off on a, a rabbit trail on that and I won't, but, uh, 45 years that I've been alive. Um, some of you listening to this have, have heard and, and seen more than I have. And you, you've gone through the, the music of the seventies and the, the early, uh, Jesus people movement and all of those things. And so you, you have a lot to, to look at as well, but, um, just to say that I think there's so much truth in some of these songs that we we need to consistently be bringing them back into our services. Um, so I'm going to kind of step off of my soapbox uh, of that whole point and uh, kind of introductory uh, material here as I'm seeing the, the, the minutes tick away. But uh, this song, as we do move forward and talk about uh, the context of it, 
um, there, there's, there's three main verses that I want to cover. There's actually four in the song, but uh, three that I'm going to cover today. And then there's a refrain that, that goes in between each. And we want to look at Elvina M. Hall, who is the author of this, and just kind of how it came into existence. So looking at Elvina, Elvina, I'm, I'm not sure if I got that right, but it's, it's one of those two, I think. Um, she's born in Alexandra, Alexandria, Virginia, uh, June 4th, 1820. And uh, she's married twice. Her first husband passed away. His name was Richard Hall. He died in 1859. Uh, so doing the math there, she's about 39, uh, widowed for the first time. And then she remarried later in 1885 to a man named Thomas Myers. Um, all that I saw that was notable about him is that he was a Methodist minister. Uh, so the song comes about kind of an interesting story. Every thing that I searched on this um, seemed to touch on how this sort of developed. And almost on a particular Sunday, she's a uh, she's at this church in Baltimore, Maryland. It's called Monument Street Methodist Church. She's on a, a morning worship service. She's in the choir. This uh, Alvina Hall, and uh, the pastor, as we can all kind of put ourselves in this position, the pastor is having this morning prayer during the service. He's kind of droning on and just um, this long, um, you know, long winded type of prayer. And so she's kind of daydreaming through this whole thing. And she has a, a hymnal, of, uh, a flyleaf paper or something of the hymnal in front of her. And she just starts jotting some, some poetry down. Uh, and these lines just, just kind of fill up this page. And then uh, she brings this to the, the church organist, a man by the name of John T. Grape. And, uh, you know, kind of what, what could we do with this sort of thing? I suppose she, she's maybe done some poetry before. I don't know, but, um, he takes it and, th and says, well, I've got a, a melody that I think would go great with this. And this I've talked about this before with songwriting. A lot of times there's, there's people, um, just more gifted at the, the lyrical content. And then there's people that are more gifted at the, the melodic content. Um, some people can blur those lines and, and do a little bit of both. Um, but even way back then, there's like many cases where there's somebody who wrote something and then the other person just has pretty much strict melody and they, they put this thing together. And so they do that with, uh, with this song. The pastor of this church, this Methodist church, um, gets, gets wind of it or, or they show it to him and he strongly urges them to, to submit it and uh, to get it published. And it goes into a, a periodical called Sabbath Carols. Um, and here's where I just kind of hit, hit the pause button and just say, at some point she had to, Elvina Hall, she had to probably come back to her pastor and say, you know, I, I came up with this. What do you think? Uh, oh, and by the way, I was kind of, I kind of just started daydreaming when you were really praying that long prayer. And, and, and I, this is, you know, I was jotting this stuff down, thinking about the, the resurrection, thinking about Christ, uh, I guess not the resurrection so much, but the, the death and, and the payment of our, our sin. And, and uh, was he up, upset with her at that um, admission? I, I guess I would assume no. If he's like really likes the song and he's urging them to get it published and and all these things, he's not he's not being too offended by that. But um, uh, maybe try it out on on your pastor sometime. Right, write some. Uh, at least keep it uh, poetry that's, um, you know, biblically based and then say, Hey, during that really long part of the service, I, I, I jotted some notes down when want to know what you think about it. No, don't, don't try that actually. But, um, that, that's just where my mind goes is, I was like, what, what would have been kind of the, the whole backstory with this thing? Maybe we'll, we'll hear it someday. Um, so then just moving forward, the song gets published, uh, for the first time in 1868. Um, I'm thinking let's pretty much 
really close to the end of the Civil War. It's after the Civil War for sure, but kind of in that that time frame of of uh, moving forward from um, that division and, and things in our land. Um, and then just as, as we see a lot of times with, with various hymns, it, it had some reworkings, some, some changes to lyrics and things over, uh, from one publication to the next. Um, but really the, the version that we have today appeared in 1874 in, um, uh, something called the gospel song book collection. So, um, kind of from, six to eight years or so there, there's some changes going on and then it's, it's kind of formalized and uh, finalized. And, um, we can go back to that point in time and say, this is the same hymn that we have now. Um, Elvina passed away in 1889. So what I found interesting is she, she remarried in 1885. So really, um, only married four or five years to her, her second husband, um, spent a good period of her life uh, widowed. And uh, from what I can guess, probably just ministering in her, her local church. And um, I think of, of people like this who write these these big songs that probably didn't even get the huge recognition that they, they did later, um, posthumously or however that phrase goes, where they, they've died in... in, in um, they're not getting royalty checks or anything from this. Not that that's what they're doing it for, but it's, it, it's completely a, a labor of love for the Lord and for the kingdom. Um, a lot different than how we do music today, uh, but maybe more of a, a pure form of how songs come about and are just then given out to the churches and, and spread from there. Maybe they got something for, for it being published. I'm, I'm not sure how all that worked back then, copyright laws, all those things. But here we have a song that today there's, you can go on Spotify, you can go on YouTube, you can type in Jesus paid it all. You've, you've got literally dozens of, of different versions of the song of people taking, I, I would be one of them now, but, um, but people taking this song and, and making it kind of their own and, and releasing it out to the world. And so just the magnitude that, that these things can, can have and the effect on, on people. Here we are, um, more than a hundred, going on a hundred and fifty years almost since, since all of this. So pretty impressive. Uh, there's a verse that I want to read as I, as I go forward and just kind of talk about Jesus paid it all. And there'll be some breaks in here just to uh, have some excerpts from the song. But um, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness, watching me, find in me that all in all. What I love about this hymn is the opening verse, which presents the truth about us and about Jesus. It's kind of just this smack to the, the gut of just like, here's, here's how it is. You know, thy strength indeed is small child of weakness. Watch and pray, find in me thine all in all. And I think the first time I heard this song was kind of taken back by that, by like, Hmm. Yeah. My, my strength really is small. And that's kind of a humbling thing to, to read and to sing over ourselves. And from the, the perspective of the Father saying, Thy, the, your, your strength is small. Find in me thine all in all. Find everything you need in me. And Jesus comes in, uh, in, in our inadequacy, he, he doesn't leave us there. He finds us in that place where we're, we're helpless and we can do nothing for ourselves. But he comes in and then he says, find yourself in me. Find what you need in me. Find your strength in nothing else but me. 
And I don't know about you, but that's a reminder I need every day, not just from the moment I accepted Christ, but just throughout my life of just waking up and just being God. You, like, like, like John the Baptist said, would you increase and would I decrease? Would you just become greater and greater because I need you and I need to just be reminded of how little I can do without you? Really nothing. I can't save myself. I can't um, somehow get myself into heaven. There's, there's nothing I can do. And that's just a great place to come to as we as we sing this song oh, now indeed I find thy power in thine alone can change the leper's hearts and melt the heart of stone Lord now indeed I find thy power in thine alone can change the leper's spots and melt the heart of stone. Just a side note again, I um the first time I heard this, I swear I swore that I heard them say change the leopard spots. And I'm thinking of like a, a, a leopard animal. And uh so it wasn't until I went back and re re read lyrics and like, oh the leper's spots. Um, yeah, I guess they have spots to, um, but just, a just kind of a thing that you, you hear lyrics the wrong way sometimes. And then you go back and read it and you, you realize, oh, okay. Anyway, that's just my embarrassing moment to share of myself with, uh, Jesus paid it all. Um, in this verse, there's this realization that we cannot change, um, we cannot cleanse ourselves and we cannot change the spots. I can't heal this the sin disease that I have, and it's kind of this spiritual leprosy is what I would call it. Um, I'm unclean, and I can't change out my heart of stone for a heart of flesh like i can't I can't do that, but Jesus can, and there's a finality and a completeness about this song that. It, it speaks of some absolutes that don't exist in a world that just kind of wants to live in this gray area and kind of half truths type of thing. Or, or this is my truth. This is your truth. We all kind of get, you know, to corner the market on what is true for us. No, this speaks of Jesus paid it all. It's his power and his alone. And Again, this is a place that we have to come to. This is a good place to come to when we recognize the end of ourselves and the place where he begins. And I love that about songs that that don't they don't water down the truth. They don't kind of get our feelings and our emotions involved and in, in too deeply embedded in it that we're talking about things that scripturally are there that we can hang our hats on. In that we can we can sing to ourselves and we can sing kind of a proclamation to other people saying, hey, Jesus paid it all. He paid the sin debt that that you and I um, that we have as we come before the Lord. And when before the throne I stand in him complete. Jesus died my soul to save, my lips shall still repeat. Jesus paid it all, oh, to him I So taking into consideration the last verse of the song um, and then this refrain that goes with it, our eyes are pointed to heaven and, and it's kind of the natural place that we come to as, as kind of the flow of thought of this, of this hymn and maybe in some of the reworkings of it over time, you know, it kind of fleshed out this way where by the end of the, the song, 
we're talking about that place of being in heaven before the throne, um, standing in him complete. Again, this, this finality, this completeness, this absoluteness of the song where there's these, these, these things that don't, don't leave it open to question. And I think we have to have that in our minds as we, as we think about the, the cross and we, we think about the resurrection and then just declaring with our tongues that Jesus saves. Thinking about that time, kind of trying to fast forward in your mind and think about what will that be like? And as I, as I kind of was blogging this, as I was getting my podcast uh, things here ready, just thinking about how there's this complete fulfillment, total joy, Right now, maybe we just kind of a, sh- a shadow of it. We have kind of just a, a, a small little snippet or glimpse of it, things through the Bible or just the, the whatever the, the Spirit kind of reveals to us. But these these words of Alvina Hall, the echo as it comes into this last refrain, as, as we kind of close the song out saying, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. It's it's gone. It's washed. It's cleansed. And now I stand before him in just uh, just completely as I uh, as he sees me, uh, a child of of God, redeemed and and restored. And just what a what a blessed thought to think and just to have in our minds as we as we sing through a song like this. Really, it really just, um, I don't know, there's certain songs that just kind of are are so well written and it's a combination of the, the song, lyrics, what we're singing about and the melody that it just strikes this tone in this chord, no pun intended. It, it just strikes this thing within us that that I think just almost magnifies that worship and almost just magnifies that sense of awe and, and reverence and, and really good, well-written songs do that. Um, I would say anointed songs, anointed by the Holy Spirit to, to pen these things the way that they're done. Even, uh, even there during a, a period of daydreaming, during a, uh, a droning on a uh, sermon. Uh, as we end this, uh, this podcast today, this episode we're, we're moving into the Easter. If you haven't, um, if you're listening before then, um, if you're not, it's you're regardless. Um, but we're, we're always meant to consider the cross, consider the empty tomb, and then allow the, the words of scripture and even the songs that we may sing to, to be in our minds, to, to bring us into that place of considering it all once again. Um, as I come into this time, my thoughts can can kind of be easily removed from the the reality of what happened at Calvary, and I can kind of go back to that first stanza, that first verse, and think about you know is my strength really that small? That's kind of a humbling thing, and I don't always want to think like oh I'm just this weak, you know, just worthless vessel. Like is is my strength really that small? Did, did I can go further and be like, you know, Jesus, did you really have to die for me? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty good person. I've lived a, a decent life. These are the, the lies I tell myself. Um, but then I'll, I'll be like, well, certainly all that should count for something. And where I'm at now, you know, it should be, should be like some good, you know, gold stars on the, on the report card of, of where I'm at. And then I, and then I'm reminded of Isaiah sixty four six, which says, "All of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. All our righteous acts are like filthy rags. The best that we can do is still just this rubbish, trash heap before the Lord. And that's that's a humbling place that I need to allow my mind to go to." And be like, yes, my strength indeed is small. Yes, my sin did put put you there, my Lord. And there's no part of me that is somehow good enough. 
Our only good comes from him and the work that he is doing in us. And thank the Lord that he is continuing to sanctify, that he's continuing to, to um, chip away and, and, and work this, this clay that, that is constantly trying to be shaped and molded into its own image, but he's, he's refining and, and chiseling away what, what should not be there, that he's working it into this, this beauty, this work of art. So guys, I, I pray that as you, as you hear this hymn, you're listening to maybe your other favorite songs, um, leading up to Easter, leading up to Resurrection Sunday, as you're maybe past this time and throughout the rest of the year, um, I'd, I'd steer you to, to any of that we've talked about before, uh, in the hymns that I love series, there's, there's some good ones, some kind of, uh, real cross focus type of, uh, messages there, nothing but the blood, uh, things like that. But just through those songs or whatever you're listening to, maybe modern worship songs, um, considering that, that, that you would just be drawn again to the reality that, that we are sinners redeemed by the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ, that he truly paid a price that we owed and he makes the way for our salvation. And if that's a decision that you're still on the fence about or not sure if you've really made him Lord and savior of your life, if that's a choice that you're wrestling with, I'd love to talk with you more about that. I know this podcast is more of a one-way conversation, but I would love to uh, to hear from you. And, and I I always respond. I always follow up on emails, um, Facebook messages, whatever. Um, you can email me, info at DerekCharlesJohnson.com, and I will be sure to get back to you. But I don't want you to wrestle with that alone without somebody who's saying, hey, I'll walk alongside you. I'll, I'll answer questions as best as I can. If I can't answer them, I'll try to point you where um, to someone who can or, or uh, a direction that will help you. But to, to realize, and as I uh, read our closing verse in a, in a couple more minutes here, just realize that there's, there's not a lot of time, I feel. And uh, the, the last podcast before this was about being ready, keeping your oil, uh, your lamp full of oil and, and being ready for the return of the bridegroom. And so if, if part of that readiness just means saying, I want to follow you, Jesus, I want to make you Lord of my life. I believe that you paid it all. I can go through the song and resonate with every line because I, I know I'm a sinner. Then then let someone step in and help you with that or uh, um, just help you to, to take that step um, of, of, of acknowledging that. It, it can be something as easily as just praying the sinner's prayer got other episodes where we've talked about that as well, but just allowing him into your life, asking the Holy Spirit to come in and reign, um, to reign in your life. That's the most important thing for me in all this. Um, whether you listen to me ever again or ever hear of my name, it does not matter. The name of Jesus is what I want you to go away with hearing and, uh, and proclaiming in your own life. So, um, it's been a blessing to share this. Uh, I'd, I'd be blessed if you go out and listen to Jesus paid it all. Um, maybe even share it with a friend or two. Um, I will put the, the link in there, but, um, again, bigger than that is just to have that realization. Jesus did indeed pay it all and all to him. I owe, um, what a glorious thing to have that assurance. Guys, Ephesians 5, 15 through 17 is our, our theme verse, our closing verse each week. It says this, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish but understand what the Lord's will is. Take care. God bless. Jesus paid it all. Oh, to him I owe Sin had left a crimson stain He washed it white as snow Sin had left a crimson stain He washed it white as snow
Hey guys, this is Derek Charles Johnson. You have been listening to the As Bold as Lions podcast. I am a blogger, a songwriter, an artist. And if you've been encouraged by this podcast, please go ahead and subscribe and share and head over to DerekCharlesJohnson.com for more encouraging content. God bless.